Remember my recent thrift flip, rust-oleum, candlestick video? Well, here's the tabletop that I didn't use, and today we're going to do something with it. I saved the pins from the old legs that I made the candlesticks out of, but somewhere along the way I lost one, so I had to get a replacement which was much longer. Now I saved you some time because it took me way too long to unwrap these beautiful table legs I got from Etsy and I will link the source in the description box but I love these Turkish legs. I knew when I saw this table come in with um, the legs off that were shorter and real um, bulky, I just thought they would make great candlesticks and this top would make a great dining table. It's not super huge, but I just think that it's stable enough that it could be big enough that it could be a dining table. So I got to work cleaning it with white lightning. There was some sticky stuff on there, so I used a little sandpaper, but no big deal. Got that cleaned up and of course rinsed it with water so there was no residue left before the painting began. Now I have always wanted to do a pour on a tabletop, so <laughs> I did today my version of the pour. Um, I, in retrospect, I know there's lots of ways to do it. I could have added some water to the paint. I could have added some Floetrol to the paint, but I didn't. I just wanted to use up some paint, and so I went with some greens and antebellum blue. So I used tree frog green, weeping willow, evergreen, and English ivy, I believe, were my colors. I tried to use the kudzu, but I couldn't get the lid open, and I was just feeling creative and wanted to get moving. <laughs> so that happens sometimes. But anyway, I just used two cups. Here's where I couldn't get the kudzu off. Never mind. <laughs> I tried, though. I gave, it, I gave it the college try. Anyway, so I move on, and I just am layering all these colors in these two cups. Now keep in mind this is an awful lot of paint. So typically you're not going to use that much paint for just a tabletop, but again, I'm experimenting and just doing my thing. So if anyone says, you know, that there's a better way to do it, I know there are better ways. <laughs> this is just the way that I chose to do it. I just wanted to, to fool around with it. So I try to mask off the area in case it gets drippy, but that's not going to be a real big concern because, as you'll see, because I didn't have any um, agent in it to help it um, extend it at all, it was kind of thick, so it didn't really flow that well. Um, but the, also the tabletop was really heavy, so it was kind of a struggle to get it to uh, get it lifted high enough but as you can see it's not moving much a little bit but not much so I'm gonna rely on a brush I'm adding some water with a mister hopefully to get it to move a little bit it's a good thing I've been working out <laughs> so it's moving a little bit as you can see but I don't want to you know push my luck and do too far so again I keep adjusting my cloth and um, just keep trying to lift it and get the paint to move a little bit I like what's happening but it's just not happening fast enough pretty colors pretty combo sort of matches my dress as well I'm pondering and thinking what to do what to do and of course I just decide well I, I decide I'm going to try to heat gun it and maybe move it around move the paint around but it wasn't moving it was only drying the paint so that wasn't going to be good so I just got a brush and I started moving the paint around and that wasn't happening for me because I was kind of muddying up the colors a lot 
but I did spread it around as much as I could without overworking it too much. And then eventually I got the brilliant idea. Because of the motif on it, the circles, I decided that I was just going to do a bunch of circular swirls. And that's what I did, and I kind of liked the end result. So here I am just um, spreading it around, and then I start to swirl it. So that's what it looks like and it's super wet so I'm gonna call it a day and let it dry overnight I start to drill some holes in the table legs I match up one of my drill bits but I'm pretty sure it's for masonry and it's not doing much for this wood. So I go with a little bit smaller bit and I drill. So you'll see my trowels and errors here. So eventually I get my hole drilled properly and then I take the bit out of my uh, drill and then put in the dowel pin. So, like I said, it takes me a while to figure all this out, but um, once I get the hole drilled properly, then I put the dowel pin in my drill and then drive it into the table leg so that then I have those dowel pins to just screw in to the table, if that makes sense. But you'll see it also. I'm sure it'll make sense when you see it. I made a lot of mess with a lot of sawdust there, but that's okay. That's what sweepers are for.
I sped this up if you only knew how long it really took, but those legs are in there. And now it's time for me to start blending on the legs. I'm just leaving it like this until I'm done with that and then I'll flip it since it's so heavy. I'm using the antebellum blue, the weeping willow, the English ivy, and tree frog green. I continue blending. I put the antebellum blue in the circles and use the tree frog green around the outside and I use that neutral brush. On the corners where the large circles are, I use the weeping willow for the large circle and again the tree frog green. I blend the tree frog green up into the weeping willow on the legs as well. So I'm only using two brushes, one for the antebellum blue and one for all the greens. There you have it. Wax is going to add the drama to this piece and blend the colors even further. I'm using Easy Peasy Spray Wax and just spraying the legs and then I'm going to take some black wax, Best Dang Wax from Dixie Bell, and I'm using an essential stencil brush. Stencil brushes are great for doing detail waxing. So if I didn't use this clear wax first, I would be very afraid to put the black wax directly on the porous chalky finish of the paint. So that's why I'm using the wax first to float the black wax. So don't be afraid. This might look a little scary as well, but they, the uh, clear wax makes it all better.
this table is a little bit heavy and I don't want to set it down or lean it on the legs. I just want to set it down and kind of have to pull those legs out a little bit so that it's stable. I am sanding uh, the top because it's a little bumpy because of all the swirling. So that kind of makes it a little bit lighter, but once I do what I'm gonna do to it, then that'll restore that color. I am looking at an Iron Orchid Design stamp set here. It's called the Adornment Stamp. And I want to mimic that little circle detail and just give it a border. When you open a new stamp set, it's recommended that you take a 220 grit sanding sponge and just wipe over the stamps. It just gives it a little tooth so that your paint or your ink sticks to it better. So I'm taking the corner piece and the border piece. I'm putting some fresh ink on my stamp pad. I'm going to start with a corner piece. These are designed so that the edges meet up with the other edges, if that makes sense. So it's kind of curved. So you want to pay attention to how you're uh, putting them together. I'm trying to get the excess ink off because I really just put a lot of ink on there. And I start in the corner. Not bad, didn't do a perfect job. Um, the next one I do, I mess up even more. But you know what, I'm not going to panic. I'm gonna keep going. If you stop and try to fix your mistakes, then you just kinda lose the whole vision for the whole thing, in my opinion. So I keep going, and then I'm gonna come back after the ink is dry. I'm going to use a combination of paint, see what I did there, <laughs> um, paint and sanding sponge to mute uh, that color a little bit. It's okay. Trust me when I say it is okay. Do not stress over little things that you think are mistakes because when other people see your work, especially a piece of this nature. They're not looking for perfection. They're looking for the artistry. They will see sections that are perfect and they'll see sections that are blended. But look what you did with the paint or look what I did with the paint in this case. I blended it. So I'm gonna keep going. I'm not gonna worry and I'll show you how I make it all come together in the end. I'm showing you a close-up here of what it looks like. See, too much ink in some places. But again, I'm not going to get upset about this. I'm going to let it dry. Then I'm going to come back and take a look at it. I even got a dot of ink right in the center. A little paint, a little sandpaper, and a little black wax, and a lot of magic. What do you think now? Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And visit us at LaVintageDecor.company. On Instagram, we're LaVintageDecor. On Facebook, we're LaVintageDecor Altoona. Stay well.